as a fresher, one thing that can make the biggest difference in your VLSI interview process is your projects. This is the most important thing on your resume which can have a great impact on your entire selection process. But many people make a lot of mistakes in choosing and doing the right projects, especially for the VLSI industry. In this video, we will go over some really interesting projects like building a GPU unit to run an AI algorithm and not some RC car projects. If you are serious about getting into VLSI, grab a pen and a paper, note down all the project ideas along with open source tools and customize a project plan for yourself. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I've seen people say that you need completely new, never done before projects on your resume to stand out and without them, you will be rejected, blah, blah, blah. See, it's not entirely true. As a fresher, it's not possible for you to come up with an entirely new idea and make new projects. It's great if you do it, but it's totally fine if you can understand an existing idea and build it in your own way and have it upgraded in some way. Like for example, you take the existing RISC-V architecture, understand it in detail and implement it. Once you thoroughly know it and have implemented it practically, you will definitely get to know some of its shortcomings. Now try to fix it with your own unique way. Even if it's a 1% change, it's totally fine until you know everything about it. Let's divide this video into three parts. Why doing the right projects can be a game changer. And then we'll see VLSI projects that you need to start with no matter the domain you choose. And then we will see domain-wise projects from beginner to advanced level. But before we go any further, make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep growing this amazing community together. I know only the serious ones will make it to the end and that's where you will find some game-changing projects which will make a difference. When you apply for a job as a fresher, the first impression is your resume and having good projects aligned with the role you are applying can definitely increase your chances of getting shortlisted. Then say that you are shortlisted and call for an interview and assuming your projects align with the role you have applied, there are high chances that most of your interview will revolve around those projects. The interview will of course start by testing your basics and then they will look at your projects. Say you have done a traffic light controller in Verilog and the job role is also for front-end VLSI. In this case, they will try to see what role in front-end you might be best for. So if they have to test you for a design role, they might ask you how you came up with the state diagram. Which design did you choose, Miele or Mure and why? And did you optimize it for the best area, power and performance? If they want you for a verification role, they will check how well you know the design and if you have tested it for all the scenarios. Same applies for a backend role. So if you have implemented the design physically till routing, you will have questions like how did you solve congestion issue, close timing, build clock, etc. The bottom line here is that if your projects are properly aligned to your role and you know in and out about the concepts revolving around it, you can control how your interview goes. Okay, moving on. No matter the domain you choose, if you want to enter into VLSI, you should have at least one project where you implement the complete VLSI flow. Right from RTL till the GDS, design a simple hardware in Verilog, write a test bench, test it and then synthesize the verified RTL code and implement it till its layout. Let's take an example of a 4-bit adder. First, come up with the architecture you'll go with. In one case, optimize for the best area and power and in one case, go for speed or performance. For speed, you'll of course go for carry look-ahead adder and to optimize for area and power, you will go for a ripple carry adder. First, design these circuits on a paper and see which one is saving up area and which one is faster. Then implement it in Verilog and write a test bench testing it. Test for all the cases possible. Simulate and test how much faster is one circuit than the other. Once you have verified your RTL code, synthesize it and check the synthesized hardware. See if you can remove some redundant logic. Like for the first sum, you will not require a full adder, right? As there will be no carry input, a half adder will be sufficient. So you can change this to a half adder, only for the first bit. Always this should be your approach. Write the code, synthesize it and check what can be done better. Take the feedback and write a better RTL code. Once your RTL is ready, you start your backend things. That is first synthesize it and then go till the final layout. Now comes the best part, physical implementation. The first step will be to synthesize the code. That means convert the RTL code to a netlist file. 
As you can see in this article code, we are adding two four bit numbers at a time with a carry. But we finally need the hardware for this code, right? While writing the RTL code, you were thinking about the synthesized hardware. That's a great practice. So now if I ask you to draw the schematic, you'll immediately draw. But when the RTL code gets very complex, you will require a tool that can synthesize the code for you. Now think what all inputs would this tool require? Of course, the input RTL code. And you will also require a library that will have all the gates, flops and latches that you finally want your hardware to be made of. This library comes directly from the fab where your design will be finally fabricated. So if you are going with TSMC, you will use a TSMC lib. Here we are using Sky 130, which comes from Sky Water Fab. Okay, so the first step is to synthesize this RTL code. So we use Viasys for this. That's an open source tool. So here I've installed Sky 130 lib, which is present in this path. And as I said earlier, synthesis mainly requires your RTL code and your input library. Let's get into this Viasys environment first. Okay. So we are reading the input using this command read liberty hyphen lib and the path where your library is present. Okay. And once that is done, we read our input RTL code, basically giving the RTL input. Then the main mapping or synthesis happens using this command synth hyphen top and your top module name. Here, as you see, the top module name is ripple carry adder 4 bit. And so we have to give that same name. And after that, we give our mapping file. Diff lib map is for mapping sequential cells and ABC is mapping your combination cells. Now your cells are mapped to the library cells, which makes sense, right? Then using write very log, we dump our final netlist. As you can see, this is how our final netlist looks like. These are your library cells and you just have the connections here and no logic, pure hardware connections. You can easily draw and visualize your schematic. Okay. So this is a three input majority gate. Whatever input is in the majority, it'll give that output. So if you have two ones as input, it'll give output one. And if you have two zeros as input, it gives zero. Tell me in the comments for what generation this is used in adder. And this is the output netlist where I did not give any input library to the two. So that is why you don't see any proper library modules here. Okay, now let me show how the schematic of our final synthesized netlist looks like. So here, this netlist is with library input. So you can see majority and XNOR gates of Sky 130 lib. And here we have not given any library input. That's why you can see random gates that are not associated to any library. Okay, moving on, let's do placement and routing for this synthesized netlist. So here we use open root. That's again an open source tool. Let's use the open road interface so that you can see interactively what's happening. First, we read the netlist file, which we generated using Viasys, and then we load our left. That is again given by the fab. Left will tell you exactly how your cell looks like, the dimension and where the pins are. Basically, whatever info you need to physically implement the design. So this file, we will have all the physical info of all the standard cells, including the majority gate and the X naught that we are using in our design. And of course, we load our library for timing analysis. This name here means how these cells are going to behave at 25 degrees Celsius with an operating voltage of 1.8 volts. Now let's link our design and first start with floor planning. We do initialize floor plan hyphen die area coordinates and area coordinates. If you see here, this is our die and this is our core area, which we will actually use for placing our cell. Okay, so this area we will actually use for placing our cell. Now let's create the tracks and place our input and output ports. Now, once that is done, let's do the final placement. First, we execute global placement. And as you can see, this is a rough placement. That is why you see there are overlap between cells. But when we do this detailed placement, these cells are placed properly. And now you see there are no overlaps, right? Now let's do the routing. Again, the global route and then the final detailed routing. So now, as you can see, the routing is finally done. Now let's save our final def file. And then using klayout, we can dump the final GDS file. Later for physical verification, we can use klayout for DRC and netgen for LVS. Now this was a very quick implementation on a very simple design just to give you a brief idea of the complete backend flow. We only did major things here, skipping power grid insertion, physical cell insertion and all. Whatever we did here is a top down approach. First, we came up with the architecture to go for the adder and then we wrote the RTL code, verified it and later synthesized and finally did placement and routing for the design and verified the physical design. This is how it actually works in the industry also. And for a better understanding, you should also do the bottom up approach. Here we go from down. So first we design transistors, NMOS, PMOS and then CMOS at the layout level. 
using n substrate p substrate and all of this you can do this using magic vlsi which is an open source tool then once we have the transistors we design the gates using x scheme and then using gates we design half adder and then a full adder using the half adders and then finally a four bit ripple carry adder using these full adders all of this is done at the schematic level in x scheme using sky 130 pdk and then we extract the spice netlist which looks like this and simulate it on ng spice for the results you can now test if your design is working as expected or not using these simulations we can implement this in detail in some other videos if you want it in this video my intention was to show how you can implement rtl 2 gds using open source tools let me know in the comments if you would love a project series for this now once you have mastered the whole vlsi flow let's get into projects for every domain mainly rtl design verification and physical design for each of these domains let's go from level 1 to level 3 see the whole point of doing good rtl projects is to write rtl codes that are optimized in the best way for area power and speed the upper management might ask you to prioritize power and area like for a phone chip or for a pc chip they might ask you to prioritize speed and performance as we discussed for a 4 bit adder you will go for a ripple carry adder if you need to save area and power but if your only priority is speed you will go for carry look ahead adder This is how your mindset should be for a good RTL designer. For level one projects, you can make a calculator which has add, subtract, divide, and multiply. Remember it; it's not like your conventional coding. You are not writing a code to run on a hardware. You are writing a code that is going to be the hardware. Then you can make a multi-bit barrel shifter or a BCD up-down counter. Coming to level two projects, here you start using FSMs. Given any problem statement, you need to get a state diagram first. Most of the job is done here. Once you have the state table, you can easily write the RTL code. You will have a case statement and based on the input and the current state, you will decide the next state. For example, if the current state is S0 and the input is 1, you go to the next state that is S1. You can make a traffic light controller, vending machine or a washing machine. Then you can develop FIFO, first in, first out. Once you are done with these, let's go to the next stage. Now you will have to design systems that have board, data unit and control unit. Control unit will be designed using FSM. I'll give you an excellent project where you will have to design both control and data path and it's a very good project to start for understanding data path and control path. So if you see here you need to design a code converter architecture to convert 8 bit binary to 8 bit gray code and vice versa. Here you can see some specifications you need to follow. And here if you see you need to design the control unit using Moore based FSM. Try implementing this it will be fun. I'll attach this doc in the description below and you can try to implement it. If you plan to make a project series, we'll definitely implement this one. Now going to final level 3 for RTL design projects. Implement five stages risk 5 and MIPS processor and once you implement it, find the shortcomings of risk 5 and try to enhance it. There are actually many issues with it. Try fixing some of them. Okay, one more very interesting level 3 project can be designing a GPU unit for K means clustering algo which is extensively used in AI ML. So basically here we'll be building a custom hardware accelerator. We'll not get much into details about what exactly K-means algorithm is, but let's see it briefly. So here we will have to form clusters for a given data set. Suppose you need to form three clusters for these set of points. So you will have to decide on some initial centroids and then find the distance from each point to these centroids. Whichever centroid is the closest to the point, you will cluster that point to that cluster and this is how the clusters will be formed. Here you have three centroids so three clusters. So once the clusters are formed you need to calculate centroids of the cluster again. So the centroid of this comes somewhere here and then again you need to repeat and find the distance from each point to the new centroids and whichever centroid is the closest place the point in that cluster. So now your new clusters will be formed and the process keeps repeating till stable clusters are formed. Remember all the numbers are stored as FP16 which is a binary floating point representation. All the AI computations on a GPU or a TPU happen in this format only. So your registers will hold numbers in FP16 format. Okay, now we need to design a hardware for this. Here the main challenge will be to find the distance from the centroid to the point. We do that using Euclidean distance. That is square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. This you will have already studied in maths. But how do we implement the hardware? 
here you need to mainly have a multiplier to find square you can use booth multiplier then a full adder and finally a module that can find square root remember all these modules should handle fp16 format in python or c++ you can simply write this in a line but here you are not writing conventional code that runs on a already built hardware you are writing the code to design a new hardware so remember that now coming to verification based projects level 1 projects you can simply write test benches to the already discussed rtl projects the test bench should cover every possible condition moving on to level 2 you can develop a complete test bench testing a synchronous fifo and then for level 3 verification projects you can implement uvm based test bench for axi interface and then you can do formal verification of risk 5 processor if at all we get a good response for making a project series i can ask himanshi who is an expert in design verification to implement some of these level 3 projects okay now moving on to projects for backend physical design my favorite and the most important part of the entire vlsi flow here the final convergence for area power and speed happens no matter how bad or good your rtl code is pd will ultimately decide how optimized your final implementation will be that will finally go into your chip for level 1 simply make a nand gate and implement it till its layout use the open source tools that i've already mentioned for level 2 you can physically implement any of the designs that i've already mentioned for rtl design if you are very sure you want to get into physical design and want to totally concentrate on back end then you can start directly from synthesis by using already ready verified rtl codes but for sure implement one basic design from rtl to physical design which i've already mentioned before it will give you a very good idea about the entire vlsi flow for level 3 projects i'll give you ready open source blocks as setup like pico rv32 that is risk 5 core and as block both 128 and 256 crypto core then a 32 cross 32 or a 64 cross 64 mac unit that is a part of a tsp block some of them will be congestion critical and some of them will be timing critical all you need to do is converge these designs here you will have to do multiple experiments to finally converge your block you can use open road for this i'll share all these blocks in the description below first experiment will be the default setup at every stage you need to check your design for utilization congestion and timing the risk 5 block will have ram so you need to start with a good floor plan have different floor plan setups and compare the metrics across the different experiments if you see a lot of over utilization at place try spreading those sets once the clock is built at cts you need to check whole timing as well along with setup you need to check how balanced your clock tree is and how you can reduce the latency and how you can control it once the routing is done you need to check for lvs and drcs for lvs use netgen where you will have to give two inputs that is your layout and the schematic and then you can use k layout for drc checking for analyzing static timing analysis you can use OpenSTA that is already integrated with open road and you can go for open time for your final timing sign off you will have to add or remove buffers or resize cells for fixing the timing most of this will be running on tickle so to have a better understanding of tickle you can develop a tickle script to extract clock skew for every violated path in the timing report the timing report will look something like this you need to extract skew for each start end point pair and you can have one python based script to summarize all the metrics at one place for every stage also should we have a video as part of the project series where i show you the physical implementation of any of these blocks till the final gds file where we converge timing, solve utilization issues and optimize it for the best power and area. And also while we implement the design, we develop some scripts to help automate things for us. For analog VLSI projects, I'll make a separate video. I'm planning to integrate it in a roadmap video for analog VLSI. So we'll include projects there itself. For now, I'll share some good analog projects in the description below. Let me know in the comments if you like the project ideas and let me know if we should have a project series where we implement these projects. I'll be posting all these projects on our Discord Chipcam server. I highly recommend doing them as a team. Head over to the collab corner on the server, share what project you are planning to work on and mention the kind of teammates you're looking for. Chipcamp is now one of the biggest electronics community you'll find online. So make the most out of it. Interact, ask for help whenever you need it and help others wherever you can. It's your community. Let's make it the best it can be. Also, if you want to connect or see some behind the scenes of a physical design engineer, you can follow me here on Insta. I'll add the link in the description below. See you in the next one.